Joe Olson, I'm 36. <laughs> That's pretty silly, huh? I've been part of the fire community for about a decade and uh, early retired for six years and enjoying life. I met my uh, ex-wife Allie at college. We were graduating, we were looking at the next steps, what are we going to do out of college? I found out about uh, an AmeriCorps program called Teach for America. It was a two-year commitment and I was only planning on doing those two years and then moving on to the next thing and I was just enjoying every day so we decided, you know, maybe, maybe we'll just be teachers. I got my first like real job and started getting bigger paychecks, but my ex-wife and I, we were still living like college students. We had this tiny little condo in Vegas that cost us like $330 a month. So we were just spending very little and making, you know, what wasn't a lot of money, but to us was a lot of money. And it started just accumulating in my bank account. And I was like, what do you do with money? What's the next step to really uh, to take advantage of this? the housing crisis was just starting. It was 2008 and prices had been falling for like a year and I went, this must be a great time to buy a rental property because because the housing market has crashed now. So we bought a rental property and then prices kept falling. And then in uh, 2009, they kept falling. And so I was like, this is another great time to buy. So we bought another two properties in 2010 I, I didn't know what I was doing at all with these first couple properties. I was like, um, look at this house sold for 360,000 at the peak and now it's 120,000. That must be a great deal. And of course that house, which we bought at 120,000, eventually fell to 80,000. I really got inspired by that to be like, I need to figure this out. So I started buying real estate books. I started attending real estate meetups and really got involved in that as a hobby. and. You know, it was at a great time because even though those first few that we bought went down in value temporarily, they eventually rebounded and we started buying more and more and really setting up our path to fire. Fire is financially independent, retired early. Uh, it basically means you have enough money that you can live off of that money without having to work. Instead of the standard American script of like, after I graduate, I get a job and I work until I'm 70 and then I get social security and then I'm done. Fire forces you to look at it differently. It makes you go, okay, First of all, let's get rid of all that stuff that society says is important, whether that's like the latest iPhone or a really fancy car. Fire goes, you know, that's really not that important to me. Let me just not do that stuff. Let me do the stuff that is important to me that I do value. And so your life tends to look differently. And then you have the whole question of when I'm done working, what do I do? And for me, that was answered by kids. Like I, I really wanted to have a family, I wanted to be there with my kids growing up, and I wanted to travel. And these aren't things you can do easily with a normal nine to five. And so I went, well, how can I accomplish that? What can I do and what do I want my life to look like? So we got the travel bug in 2009 after backpacking Europe, the one summer we didn't teach summer school. And so after we early retired, we went over to Europe and bounced around there for a while. We had our first child, Annabelle. She was born in Istanbul. Then we came back to the States to show her to our family before heading to Australia. We bounced around Southeast Asia. We went to New Zealand and Japan. We came back to the States and spent some time in an RV on the West Coast going up to Canada and down to Mexico. We went to Amsterdam and had our son Cassian. And then as we were about to have our third child, Caitlin, we decided while the kids are young, we really want to be near family. So we settled in Seattle near my family for while they're growing up. So um, Ali and I got divorced and it was uh, a struggle for a lot of a lot of reasons. You know, we have three young kids and we'd been together for almost 15 years and um, we just wanted different things. Our lives were going in different directions and so we decided to separate and it felt like like sort of a failure, like a personal failure, but also sort of a fire failure. Like, shouldn't things be great? You're retired, you don't have jobs, you have kids, you have the life you want. Like. What, what happened, you know? And, and coming to grips with that was difficult with, with sharing with people and saying like, yeah, it, it didn't work out, um, but we're both 
you know, supportive of each other and happy and, and moving in different directions, but co-parents and, and still teammates. I feel like after the divorce with my finances, it's sort of like when I first retired where there was a lot of uncertainty. After we first retired, we were like, how much is travel gonna cost? How much are kids gonna cost? I don't know, what's our budget gonna be like? Right now I'm in a similar situation where a whole bunch of money just, you know, Ali went and that's hers now and our net worth got cut in half or my net worth got cut in half and I have all these rental properties but their cash flow changes through time and you know during COVID a lot of my income went down because tenants couldn't pay their rents and um, I'm spending a lot more than I anticipated. There's still some questions around paying Ali this big chunk of money and what's that gonna cost me in terms of interest, doing cash out refis on some of these properties and things like that. And I'm kind of in a situation where I was earlier of, if I need to go back to work, I will. I think I'm okay. I think my cash flow will cover my expenses, but also I'm willing to be flexible. My life is very bipolar. I have on weeks and off weeks. If I have the kids, it's an on week and it's kids nonstop from 6.30 in the morning till 8.30 at night. It's, it's go, go, go. I get a brief window at nap time. On my off weeks, it's very dull. Um, I, uh, I'm actually still trying to figure that out. I'm developing some new hobbies. I started painting last year. I do some gaming with friends. So I, I really switch back and forth between like a more typical fire life of, hey, you've got a bunch of freedom and a not fired at all, you are a stay at home parent and scrambling to not die. I donate a lot towards international causes. And then I have a few domestic causes that are just very important to me personally that I also donate to. The amount that I donate grows by a certain amount each year. I've set these goals of how much I'm going to donate every year and I've made a promise that if I can't donate that, I'm going back to work. Like if I don't have enough money to donate to these causes, then I don't have enough money to be early retired. I need to go earn that money so that I can spin my lifestyle because I'm not okay just having my nice lifestyle and not contributing to these causes. For anyone seeking fire, I think the key is a quote by John Stuart Mill that I really like, where he says, I have learned to seek my happiness in limiting my desires rather than in attempting to satisfy them. And if you can look at what in your life makes you happy and not constantly want to be chasing like, I want this new fancy car, I want this extravagant restaurant, but really going, you know what, this is what's important to me, spending time with my family, let's go have a picnic in the park. I think the best path to fire is really critically examining how are you spending your money and is it bringing you happiness?